Hi chemists. We are almost done with our unit on thermochemistry. Um, believe it or not, this is the second to last video in this series. So we are going to be working on heating curves and heating curves you probably are familiar with because you might have seen them in middle school. But now what we're going to do is relate what we're observing on the macroscopic to now applying mathematical calculations to the energy changes associated with this. After this video, you should be able to explain what occurs on each point of a heating curve and calculate the total energy required for water to go through its phase changes. Heating curves is a graph of temperature versus time. It describes the enthalpy changes that take place during phase changes. When a solid substance is heated, its temperature will increase until it reaches its melting point. Temperature will then stay constant during the melting process. When a substance is completely melted, its temperature will again increase until it has reached its boiling point. And then your temperature will stay constant during boiling. Once the substance is completely vaporized, the temperature will once again increase. Heating curve problems will involve two major types of calculations, both of which you're pretty familiar with. The first one is Q equals MC delta T, whenever you have a temperature change. The second is dimensional analysis using the delta H, wherever there is a phase change or a flat line on the heating curve. Your mass will be the known. So I'm gonna show you some examples, but before we move on, I wanna talk about the types of delta H's that you'll see. So the first one is molar heat of fusion. Fusion is another name for melting. The reason why it's called molar heat of fusion is because it's the amount of energy required to melt a substance and that the specific amount of that substance is one mole of the substance. Molar heat of vaporization is whenever you have the substance boiling. So this is the energy required to vaporize or boil the substance for the substance to go from liquid to gas. So here's an example. You have some water, specifically 165 grams of ice and it starts at negative five degrees Celsius and it turns into steam at 103. What we wanna do is we want to provide a graph, a visual representation of what's going on, and then we're gonna do the calculations for this problem. The first thing you wanna do is think about the important temperatures in between the um, negative five and the 103 degrees Celsius. The important temperatures are the phase change temperatures. So notice I have already put in zero degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. Now what we want to do is focus on what's occurring at each point of the curve. So at negative five, you're going to see the temperature of the ice increase, and it's going to increase until you reach the melting point. You're going to see ice melt at zero. And in order to calculate the energy change associated with this, you're going to use Q equals MC delta T. At zero, you're going to see the substance melt. And this is where you have to do dimensional analysis and you're going to be using delta H of fusion. The temperature will again increase until you reach 100 degrees Celsius. This is where you're going to use Q equals MC delta T to calculate the energy change to convert the liquid. And then at 100 degrees Celsius, you're going to see the substance vaporize. And that's where you're going to use the delta H of vaporization. Then we only have a little bit further to go because after 100 degrees Celsius, we're only going to 103 degrees Celsius. And so that's where your substance will be gas and you'll be using Q equals MC delta T again because the temperature is changing. You will always be given this information. The only one you won't be given is the specific heat of water because you guys know this already. So here is the example. We're going to do the energy changes associated with this process. So we're going to do the first portion, number one. So we are going to start with ice. We're going to use Q equals MC delta T to calculate that energy change. We're going to use the 165 grams of ice that's given to us in the problem. And then notice that we want to use the specific heat of ice, which is 2.01 joules per gram degrees Celsius. The temperature change is going to be five degrees Celsius. 
because again, it's final minus initial. Your Q value, when you do this calculation, is 1660 joules. So that takes care of the first part of the curve. It's helpful if you're doing sig figs to use mass as the number of sig figs that you should have. So having three sig figs in your answer works really well because we have 165 grams as the substance. Let's do part two. Part two is the dimensional analysis calculation. Notice we can't use Q equals MC delta T because there's no change in temperature here. However, we know there's an energy change because if you had, for example, an ice cube, you know that your energy is going from your hand into the ice cube. But since there's no energy change, we can't calculate delta T. So therefore we have to use dimensional analysis. We'll start with the mass of water. We're gonna use that to get into moles of water. And then we're going to go from that into the energy. Now, according to the top here, we see that the delta H of fusion is 6.01 kilojoules per mole. I am gonna do one more conversion factor because notice the question does say heat energy in joules. And then when you calculate this, you should get positive 5.5 times 10 to the fourth joules. I chose to put in scientific notation just to have the correct number of sig figs. Let's talk about part three. Part three, we're gonna be using liquid and it's Q equals MC delta T because there is a change in temperature. We're gonna be using 165 grams. We do know the specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree C and the temperature difference is 100 degrees Celsius. Your Q value should be positive 6.90 times 10 to the fourth joules. All right, we're almost there. This is number four. So calculation number four, again, is a phase change. It's a flat line. So we can't use Q equals MC delta T. We are vaporizing at this point. So we're gonna start with 165 grams of water, convert into moles, and then use the 40.7 kilojoules per mole. And then again, because we want our answer in joules, we're gonna take it one step further and use one kilojoule to a thousand joules. And so that would be your answer. We've got one more step. We're only going up three degrees here. So we're going into gas and it's going to be 165 times the specific heat of steam. And then we're changing by three degrees Celsius. When you do this calculation, you end up getting a thousand. So to have the proper number of sig figs, I did decide to put it in scientific notation. But you're not done yet because notice the question does say, what is the total amount of heat energy in joules that must be added? So therefore you have to take all the individual energy changes that you calculated. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, all five of them, add them together and that will give you the total energy change for this process. Now you may say, wow, this is a lot of work, five calculations for one problem, and I would agree with you. So more often than not, teachers won't necessarily have you do all five calculations. Maybe they'll just give you a section of the curve to calculate. Either way, I hope this video helped you, and we always talk about this. It's really important to practice, so make sure you do your homework. Thank you so much for watching.